Hello again from the Park Lane Hotel, where the BIS Group British Speed Chess Championship is moving towards its climax. The question is, who plays John Nunn in next week's final? Well, we'll shortly find out. Our two remaining semi-finalists are both international masters. There's Julian Hodgson, bursting with confidence since his victory over Glenn Fleer in the quarter-final. He plays white against the Russian defector Igor Ivanov, who's a bit of a dark horse, I suppose you could say. He slipped through almost unnoticed right from the preliminary qualifying rounds. The arbiter, Les Blackstock, is ready to start the clock. And words of wisdom now from your commentator, Ray Keane, who has Murray Chandler with him. Well, that is a surprise from Julian Hodgson. Perhaps the last move one would, one would have expected from him. Hey, Murray? Uh, well, Julian's very flexible. Yes, but I've never seen him play that before. And Igor Ivanov copies what Julian's played. Igor Ivanov, of course, is now the reigning Canadian champion, which explains his participation in this BIS tournament. And what we're seeing now is perhaps the beginnings of what's known as the King's Indian Attack where White develops his king's bishop on the king side of the board, the right edge, the right flank. Uh, very slow opening, preparing for greater complications in the middle game. Not trying to force things too early. And Ivanov, the Canadian champion, copying all of White's moves so far. Julian Castles. And Ivanov is the first to vary. He puts a pawn in the centre, like pawn to d5. I'm told that Julian Hodgson is in fact wearing John Nunn's lucky tie for this game. Julian was wearing it for some earlier games too. If Julian wins this, he'll be playing John Nunn himself in the final. So what on earth they'll do with the lucky tie, I'm not sure. I have to have a tie break, I think. Yes. And he offers a gambit pawn. But if Black takes that pawn, d5 takes c4. White can easily get it back by giving a queen check on the a4 square, forking the black king and the black pawn. It's more likely that Ivanov will either castle or perhaps support his own pawn. No, Ivanov has taken the pawn, but he won't hang on to it for long. Out comes the white queen giving check. And as you can see, there's a double attack on the black king and the black pawn on c4. And Ivanov parries the check by retreating his king's knight. Many ways of parrying the check. This is a perfectly good one. White takes off the pawn. And Igor Ivanov develops his other knight. Julian develops his other knight. Possible disadvantage of this move is that it cuts off the retreat of the white queen backwards down the C file. Murray, what do you think of this position? Well, knowing Julian, I suspect he, he wants to do something a little unusual. Um, just possibly when the queen's eventually attacked, he, he might swing it across to the king's side and try and start an attack there. It's yes, I see what you mean. He's, you mean if the black knight goes to b6, for example, now, he might play queen h4. Yes, this isn't a particularly common plan, but I, I've played Julian quite a lot over the years, and it's the type of thing he might do, especially in a game um, where time is going to be a critical factor. Yes, I think that could be a very good ploy if black had already castled. But uh, if he's forced to put his queen on h4 before black has castled, there's a black counter plan playing the pawn from h7 to h6 and then pawn to g5. Well, we'll see now whether Julian plans to play queen h4. But if he does, I think this plan of, for black of playing the pawn from h7 to h6 and then perhaps at a later stage g5 could embarrass the white queen. I think Ivana's been very clever here in attacking the white queen before committing his king to the king's flank. But, uh, well, Murray, if he has to bring his queen back... No, he's going to h4. Right. Now, let's see, will Ivanov just castle king's side, or will he try a queen hunt, starting off with the pawn move h7 to h6? 
Well, he hasn't castled. He's played 8-7 to 8-6, as I predicted he would. And uh, obviously, this is an ambitious idea. Uh, the whole plan is to try and entrap that white queen, which is on the edge. Now, it looks at first sight as if the white queen's got a whole range of squares to retreat to if it's attacked. But in fact, if you look at them, every single one is defended by back black pieces, apart from e4 and f4. You see the other squares for it, Murray, apart from e4 and f4? Not at the moment. When, when he plays g5, um, he will have another square on h5. But yeah. he also has to watch out for the move bishop f6, which uh, can also harass the queen in some lines. Yes. Yes, I, do, I don't think White's handled his opening particularly accurately. And I think Julian's going to have to watch out now. So if you were uh, Julian here, Murray, what would you do? Don't answer that, he's just done it. <laughs> I would have done the same. Yes, moving sure. up the deep horn. Now, of course, one idea behind this is that uh, in absolute extremis, if black plays g5, white might not be able to sacrifice the bishop on g5 and get two pawns for a piece. And that would be especially effective if black had castled kingside. So I think Igor now has to decide how to uh, continue the attack against the white queen. But there's a case here now, of course, of just playing bishop f5. It takes away the e4 square. And that might even force white to play queen f4 at once to get out of the forest of black pawns. Yes, and he's gone for bishop f5, which takes away the e4 square from white's queen. Well, what odds will you give me on the move g4 here, eh? Right? g4 by white is not completely out of character for Julian Hodgson, but it is not the kind of move I would play myself. I wouldn't recommend it to my friends. I think the safest thing here is queen f4, and just admit the error of the opening and then try and fight on in the middle game without being uh, too much disadvantaged on time. I really can't believe that White will play g4 here. That's too crazy. Well, in the players' room, while they're watching these games, there's often been large bets going on, stakes of 10 to 1 over various results. And uh, some people uh, have done quite well <laughs> on such moves. Well, that is a surprise to me anyway. Julian Hodgson has played pawn to g4, which of course, in a strategic sense, is a terrible weakening of his king's flank pawns. But uh, Murray predicted it, uh, based on uh, discussions in the players' room. 10 to 1, I think. Yes. It is a most, most unorthodox move. Uh, it's very unusual, but it's, it's a desperate move. Um, it's, it's a gamble. Yes, it's certainly a gamble. But Julian's a gambler. He's one of the players most active in the in the betting pool in the players' room. Uh -huh. Well, Igor looks absolutely outraged by this move. Well, one advantage of such a move is that the, the Russian school of players, and of course Ivanov was originally from the Soviet Union, uh, are trained very classically. And when you do play such moves, it, it does outrage them, uh, you know, their sense of sort of art and style. So uh, it's it's waving a... A red flag. A red flag at him, really. Yeah. Uh, well, Igor has calmly moved his bishop back. No uh, rash counter moves like g6 to g5. And Julian retreats his queen. So at the cost of some hideous weakening of his king's flank, Julian has at least avoided any immediate threats to capture his queen. But we do have in front of us an absolutely unique position. I have never seen anything like it. And Igor Ivanov, the reigning Canadian champion, formerly from the USSR, now pondering how to exploit that loosening of the white pawns in front of the white king. Queen up, attacking the pawn. Queen and bishop acting together as a battery, attacking the white pawn on g4. And I'd say, Murray, that indicated a very clear intention of castling queenside for black, wouldn't you? Yes, I think uh, almost certainly the next move, the, the black king will cast on the other side, leaving the way free for, for black to attack the white king. Well, 
as one might have expected from the unorthodox nature of this game, Julian Hodgson has not bothered to defend the pawn. He simply moved his knight into the centre, probably with the idea of going from e4, where the knight currently is, to the square c5, bothering the black queen. So will Igor take the pawn, or will he castle queenside? And Igor has spurned the pawn. Very interesting counter move. Thrusting his knight out onto the extreme edge. The point being to stop white from playing his knight from e4 to c5. And now Julian takes off time to defend his g4 pawn. And probably now castles queenside, Murray, for black. Yes, I suspect so. That I didn't expect at all. Uh, a curious move, which in fact I think makes it more difficult for Black to castle Queensheard at all. The move admittedly makes the C5 square more secure, but uh, it seems to cut off the retreat of Black's own knight and creates weaknesses along the long white diagonal H1 to A8. Hi Murray, do you understand that move? No, I'm still trying to work out what his idea is. It, it looks it looks insane almost. Uh, well, thanks for agreeing with me. <laughs> I mean, it, it does. It, it definitely discourages Black from castling. Um, he's going to have potential terrible problems along that long diagonal. Um, very odd. Yes, Julian seems pretty happy. Um, he's just brought his bishop out. And this really is a very, very funny move, Black's move, b6. I, I think Igor is uh, already re already regretting it. Yes, he's taken the pawn. He may as well take it. There's not a, not a lot else he can do. <coughs> Black Bishop takes the pawn, incidentally attacking the white rook. But as I've said, this is a perfectly reasonable gambit for white. Nobody, no strong player would mind giving up that pawn. Both sides now with about 10 minutes. Perhaps Igor, slightly less time than Julian. And Julian moves his rook, incidentally offering another pawn on a2. Though it is very, very dangerous to take that a2 pawn. And a possible threat for white in this position is the sacrifice. Rook on b1 takes the black bishop on b2, followed by knight on f3 jumping into e5. And there could be terrible carnage in the centre of the board in that case. Murray, you wouldn't take the pawn on A2, would you, here? Uh, not yet, not yet. No, not even I would take that pawn. No. <coughs> of course, the, the black bishop retreats to G7. Taking the pawn on A2 is much too dangerous. But now White has a number of promising moves. One of them would be to play bishop on F4, takes the pawn on C7. Another interesting move here for White would be just uh, knight on f3 to e5, clearing off some obstructions from that diagonal. No, first of all, rook c1. Almost certainly threatening to take the black knight on c6. Rook c1 takes c6. Very promising sacrifice. Rook to c8. This really is rampant materialism by Igor. Uh, he's become he's, a real capitalist. Well, he simply so. defended the pawn on c7. Um, he's uh, having won a pawn, he wants to hang on to it. He's not giving it back, and he absolutely refuses to believe that white is threatening rook takes c6. But Julian's fingers must be itching to make a sacrifice like that. Whatever the result of this game, Murray, I certainly admire Igor Ivanov's uh, boldness, courage in taking this material and hanging on. Yes, it didn't seem to be a necessary plan. Uh, I mean, it, it might still be possible, but uh, his position did seem to be a lot better and, and much easier if he didn't do it. Yes. This may be the crisis of the game, Murray, and if White can't find something here and Igor can castle the next move, he may get away with these uh, outlandish concepts. Yes, Julian's, Julian's going to have to find something uh, very aggressive in this position. Well, rook takes c6 is one idea, knight e5 is another. 
Well, that's, that's a bit surprising, just rook c2. Mm. A very quiet move. He's defending the pawn on a2 and preparing to double up his rooks in the c-file. He's not trying any fireworks at all. He's just trying to get the pawn back. Well, while talking about outrageous moves here, perhaps Igor should consider playing g5 himself, which chases away the white bishop from the attack on c7. No, Igor's played more safely. He's played his bishop from e6 to d5 and given more protection to his knight on c6. Yes, Russians don't play moves like g5. Yeah, it's not very classical, is it? No. Still relatively few moves played. Both players with about five minutes left. There is going to be a terrible time scramble here. And Julian doubles rooks on the open c file. Both rooks piled up against the black knight on c6. A curious feature of this game, of course, is that black still hasn't castled. When you're learning how to play chess, all the books say castle quickly. And here's Igor Ivanov, one of the strongest players in the tournament, snatching pawns, putting his knights on the edge and still not casting. But at last he castles, finally bringing his king into a degree of safety. And Julian's queen goes back to the h4 square from where it was chased earlier on. What's black do about the pawn on h6, Murray? Well, it's quite ironic because uh, after all of these these moves in the middle, White's actually achieved his original plan of, of putting the queen on h4 uh, when when Black's castled kingside. So, in in some sense, White has White has now regained the initiative. It's not so easy. Yes, strange, isn't it? It's a curious seesaw game. Igor takes off one white knight, and White takes back. So he's reduced some of the attacking potential of the white position, but the knight on c6 is now under threat from the two white rooks. Yes, this is a real problem. Knight into d4, attacking the white rook on c2. White takes. Ivanov flicks in a move. g5 now, forking white queen and white bishop. That's known as a Zwischenzug, an in-between move, a sandwich move, German expression. Many German expressions in chess. White Queen goes to h5, and Ivanov takes the knight. White Bishop retreats. Black Queen goes into the centre, and he saved the pawn on c7. White plays h4, trying to break up the black pawns. The moves are going to come thick and fast now. They're both quite short of time. The question is, is that white queen on h5 as force for attack, or is it out of play? f7 to f6, not a particularly attractive move, not one of your classical Russian moves, but he had to shore up his king side. In comes the white rook, preparing to switch sharp right, trying to join in the attack against the black king. Igor centralises a rook. Both sides getting very short of time now. Pawn takes, and pawn takes back. Murray, White's problem is at the moment the white bishop on g2 is not playing much of a role. Well, I think he's going to play bishop f3 here. He's going to, to go for an attacking plan to try and... Uh, there yes, he goes. Yes, correct. Challenging the white rook. White's plan, you think, is to play king g2 and the other rook to h1, maybe? Yes, if he can get his other rook to h1, he's going to have a very strong attack. Yes. Julian swaps rooks. Igor takes with a pawn. And now we're happily predicting king g2 here. And there it goes, king g2. The threat is rook on c1 to h1. White is trying to mass his pieces on the king's side. Black knight comes back. And Julian, we expect to play rook h1. A rook d1. Mm, that that's an a, odd move. I don't understand that's that. That's very odd. I was thinking he might have taken off the knight. Queen goes back, challenging the white queen. That is very sensible. White's queen retreats. Of course, he can't exchange queens. His attack would go. And Igor brings his own knight back into defence. Cluster of black pieces now around his king, trying to ward off the white attack. Pawn to e5, very interesting, investing another pawn in the attack. He's trying to enliven the white-squared bishop. Igor takes it. 
White bishop goes to d5, pinning the black knight. Pawn attacks the bishop. Bishop retreats, still pinning the black knight to the black king. Alternatively, ideas of bishop c2, the king escapes, king moves away. White queen comes in, circling around the black king. Igor has to watch out now, he really does. White's two pawns down. But that move, e4 to e5, sacrificing a pawn, was very ingenious. Queen up, attacking the black knight, rook defends the knight. Rook h1 now, Murray. Rook there h1. Comes. Hodgson's in his element here. Yeah, he, has he, a, he loves this type of position. He, he has a big initiative for two pawns. Two pawns down, but an attack. Very hard to see what Eagle can do. c5, pawn to c5. In comes the rook. This is looking very dangerous for black indeed suddenly. Queen, queen away, but now the knight's pinned to the queen. Both flags hanging. Julian Hodgson has slightly more time. Queen retreats, threatening to come in on the other side of the wall. King across, attacking the white rook. Rook goes back. Rook to d8, op op occupying the file. Queen attacking the knight. Pawn on, attacking the bishop. Bishop goes to c2. Julian didn't like that check. He's now lining up the queen and the bishop against the h7 square. Pawn to b5. Igor is advancing his extra pawns, trying to make a queen out of them. Can Julian land a blow before this happens? In comes the bishop, regrouping for a further attack. Murray, how would you say things were going now? Well, in the last few moves, Ivanov's improved his position enormously. Um, the queenside pawns are, are coming up. Um, I don't understand Julian's move, king g3. That last move, it strikes me he's running out of ideas here. Igor's king running away there. Julian can take a pawn back there, though, can't he? He can take the pawn on a7 if he wants to. Well, he probably should, yes. He has. There he goes, pawn. So he's only one pawn down now. Well, he's got two bishops, and uh, the black king's in the centre, are probably... It's hard to say, mm. really. There's so little time. They're having to move so quickly. I'm glad I'm here, not playing this game. Yeah. This is amazing. Igor Ivanov rushing his king across the centre of the board. Rook check. King away again. Bishop into d5, pinning, rook takes, rook takes. White is now rook for bishop up. Knight in, attacking the rook. Something's going wrong here with Igor's position. I think he's cracked up in the time scramble. I think he might have thought that was check. He, he might have just forgotten that Hodgson, was the, that Hodgson was the moved point of, his king. That was the point of king g3. He yeah. avoided knight f4 check. I, th I think he just thought it was still check. Julian is now winning. Igor's position has fallen apart. Bishop check. King up. Now, Eagle's position is desperate. That is check. Not sure it helps an awful lot. King back. Big threat of Queen C8 check now. I don't see what Eagle can do about this. Now, Eagle's really had it here. Yes. That's it. Igor Ivanov resigns. Julian Hodgson is through. Got a very tense and exciting game. Let's bring both players over, shall we? The new finalist and the uh, beaten Igor Ivanov, who almost made it all the way from the preliminary rounds right through to the final. Igor, what did you think went wrong with your game today? Uh, <laughs> Apart from I, everything. I don't like to, to tell you. <laughs> you keep it close to your chest, all right. Congratulations anyway, That's Julian. Right. You're in the final. One thing I'm interested to know, yes. you're wearing John Nunn's lucky tie there. Thank you, John, if you're out there. You're playing John in the final, of course. Who's yes. going to wear the tie in the final? Well, I mean, this tie's won five games in five. It's a pretty hot tie, so I think... <laughs> well, I've got it on me, so John's going to have to work to get it off me. Well, like Murray Chandler suggested you, you know, perhaps have a tie break. He's very funny, Murray. <laughs> no, but um, the possession's nine-tenths of the law, so I think I'll claim it for the final. Looking forward to it? Yeah, he's a very dangerous man, John Nunn. I've got to be a bit careful. But hopefully I'll get white again. I've had three whites in a row, which is um, 
very good news. If I get another white, I'll be very happy. Well done, both of you. We'll Thanks see you next much. week. It only remains for me to say, join us then at the same time next week for the final of this BIS Group British Speed Chess Championship with £2,000 and, of course, a brand new title at stake. From all of us here, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>